Second and nine for Arizona State. Again, just one timeout left for Washington. Here's Wilkins keeping it. He hurdles a defender, which he's done several. Grant hurdles in high school. City to city, but he's found a home here in Tempe. And he's got a chance to knock off number five as they throw it here on third and five. It's ruled a catch and a fumble recovered by Steve Miller, the right guard. It's fourth down. Complete pass, fourth down. So that's about a four. Incomplete forward pass, fourth down. So they can take the play clock down here. They do snap it, and Wilkins will throw it, gets hit, and the pass. Oh, my goodness, it's caught. C.J. French long inside the 10, first and goal. Top 25 team entering today. There will be no handoffs. There will be. They'll be an entirely different team down the stretch. Wilkins takes a knee. He'll have to do this. Certainly helps his cause to stay by beating Washington. And there it is. Wilkins takes a knee. The Devils. Set number five, Washington. How's it going, everybody? Flash Jordan here for the week eight of college football in the 2017 season. Now, we missed last week again. I know I said it would never happen, but the Chicago Cubs were playing in the playoffs, and I guess we technically still are. And that's kind of the reason we almost missed this week because um, they were playing, but right now they're getting destroyed in game five. So, honestly, that game, it, you know, it's kind of irrelevant to me now. But. We're gonna do our video this week on week eight. Last week was, I mean, mayhem would be an understatement. Four top 10 teams lost, and I believe like seven total, seven or eight total of 20, top 25 teams lost. And there were no ranked games. So that is unbelievable. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna get in to week eight. We're not gonna recap anything from last week. Um, yeah, let's get into it. First game we have two teams that they've both been pretty disappointing this year. Now, I would say Louisville has been more disappointing due to the fact that they started off ranked, they don't have many injuries. They're just terrible right now. They're playing terrible. Florida State's actually been playing all right in these past couple weeks. And I'm going to pick them to win at home against Louisville. Their defense is terrible. Um, they are the third worst Power 5 defense, according to calculations that I've done. Only like like Syracuse and Kansas are worse or something. I, I forgot what the teams are. But Louisville is playing terrible right now. Florida State's playing good. So I'm going to pick Florida State to win this game. And now let's bring in our insider, Craig Dag Cruz. Starting off week 8, are we going to have more upsets this week? And is it going to start off with Louisville victory over Florida State? Well, that's so tough to predict, obviously. That's the whole point of the show. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think that usually the week six and seven teams tend to settle in, but this year it's a little bit different. We've got some major upsets. Of course, every year there's major upsets. Uh, every week, it seems like. I'm, Florida State, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pick Louisville. I feel like they need to... To, uh, if they want to get a decent bowl game in this game, I'm going to go ahead and pick them. I'm going to say Louisville. Hmm. Interesting. Next game we have here, the number 10 Oklahoma State Cowboys at the Texas Longhorns. Now, last week, Texas just lost to their rival um, across the Red River, Oklahoma. And it raised a question that I have with Texas that we've had basically every year. Which Texas are we going to get? Are we going to get the big game Texas, like this one? That, or like, this is a big game, so it would be big game Texas. Or are we going to get struggling Texas? This week, I think we will get big game Texas. That being said, 
they will still lose this game. Oklahoma State will defeat Texas. Mark my words. Oh boy, that was a good statement. That being said, let's go with Oklahoma State. Like you were saying, I don't think the Texas the top 10 team is going to show up. In Oklahoma State, they've got something to prove in the last five or six games. Uh, it's going to be Oklahoma State over Texas just due to the fact that they're due. They're due for another big Texas can be a big strong. Staying with the Texas theme, the Iowa State Cyclones traveling to Lubbock, Texas to play the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Now, these two teams are pretty interesting. Iowa State, 4-2, and two, something they haven't seen in a long time. Um, they upset Oklahoma, which is amazing. Um, and Texas Tech, you know, last week they blew an 18-point lead against West Virginia. Now, I think West Virginia is pretty good, so I really can't hate on them too much for that. That being said, I think they're going to win. Texas Tech is going to take this game. Um, I think I think they're a top 25 team, honestly. Um, so yeah, Texas Tech beating Iowa State, but it probably will be like a close margin. You're saying Texas Tech is a top 25 team, or Iowa State is a top 25? Team? Texas Tech. What do you think about Iowa State? Should they be top 25? With a win at Texas Tech, I could yeah. put them in there possibly. Yeah. So again, Iowa State, giant killers in both basketball and baseball, they tend to lose games they're supposed to win. I don't see this game as a supposed to win or lose. I think it's a great matchup. You should put it lower in your confidence ranking on the pick -em. Uh Let's go Iowa State here, and Iowa State with the win with the, tw with the top 25 rank afterwards. Hmm. Bold. Next game we have number 20, UCF Knights traveling to Annapolis to play the Navy Midshipmen. Now, Navy lost their first game of the year last week against Memphis. And a really good game. Navy played good. Memphis just played a little bit better. And UCF is 5-0. I mean, this is this is a great start for UCF. A team that went 0-12 just a couple of years ago. They look like they're getting on track. With that being said, they're going to win. UCF's going to take this one over the Navy Midshipmen. Navy's going to lose two straight. I could see UCF taking a little bit of a jump in the rankings, possibly hopping over USF this week. Wow. I wish I could agree with you, but I don't agree with you. Good teams are allowed to have horrible games and then repossess what they had before for the rest of the season, i.e. Stanford lost versus North Northwestern a couple years ago, went on to win the Pac-12 i.e. Clemson loses to Syracuse last week, i.e. probably go on to win the ACC. In the same way, maybe it's going to be the independent champ if there was a championship. They're going to win. And once again, you know nothing. Navy is in the American Conference, but whatever. Anyway, moving on. The number nine it's Oklahoma... It's still independent in my mind. Okay, whatever. The number nine Oklahoma Sooners playing the Kansas State Wildcats in Manhattan, no not New York, in Manhattan, Kansas. I can only imagine what that town is like, probably a complete contrast of Manhattan, New York, but that's besides the point. Oklahoma is absolutely going to destroy Kansas State. Oklahoma is better on the road. Um, they're probably one of the best road teams in the entire country right now, so I'm going to take Oklahoma big in this one. Yeah, I'm thinking of two, but... They didn't put Syracuse versus Clemson as a pickup game last week. And look what happened. Well, it was on Thursday, yeah. but okay. I'm saying that I think it's possible for them to lose. Oklahoma needs to lose, to be honest. With you. They need to lose. Um, but I don't see it happening here, so let's just go Oklahoma. Well, a lot of love in the Big 12 this week. Next game we have the Kentucky Wildcats at the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Now Kentucky, at five and one. And there's a lot of teams this year who are really surprising me, and I mean, honestly, Kentucky five and one again. That's really surprising. But I think Mississippi State's going to win this game. Um, you know, they've had a couple tough losses here, um, but I do think Mississippi State will take this one over Kentucky. But it will probably be a really good game. Well, I I knew somebody 
couple of years ago that was a Mississippi State fan, and I really didn't like that person. On the account of that, I'm picking Kentucky. However, to back that up, Kentucky is decent. They're no longer a seventh, eighth place team annually. I They're agree. a team that can that can do pretty good. I'm picking Kentucky. Yeah, I agree. They're definitely making strides but they're going to lose Mississippi State. That's just that. Mississippi State, again, Kentucky and Mississippi State, they're going to be in the same pool of teams like, eh, they're not horrible, right. but eh, they're not good. We'll save the two biggest games for last. We have the Wyoming Cowboys at the Boise State Broncos now. Now, both of these teams are looking to make a statement as we head in to the final stretch of the year. Boise State coming off a huge win at San Diego State, a game that I did not think they had a chance in, but boy, they, they, they just killed San Diego State, and I think they're going to do the same to Wyoming this week. Quarterback uh, Josh Allen, yeah, it's, quarterback Josh Allen I think was a little overhyped heading into the year. I mean, they're 4-2, and two, that's not terrible, but nah, I'm, I'm taking Boise State in this one. Boy, you want to pull for the lifelong underdog, Wyoming. I mean, what's out in Wyoming? You've got some space, and then all of a sudden you got this college that can recruit decent athletes and they're doing good. What's their, are they ranked right now? What's their rank? I don't remember. Nobody's ranked. They're not, they're neither ranked. And the records are pretty good, though. So, I, I think it's Wyoming. I think Wyoming can win. I'm picking Wyoming. I'm pulling for the teams. I like to pull for teams that generally aren't popular. And Boise State is definitely a popular school. So you got the Potato State versus the Cattle Herd State. I'm going with Wyoming. Thanksgiving. We have the Fresno State Bulldogs against the San Diego Aztecs. The aforementioned San Diego State Aztecs who got blown out by Boise State last week. I think they're going to have a rebound week this week. I think they will win this game against Fresno State. It'll probably be a close, but it'll probably be a close game. I'm having this down in my one-two-three area. Yeah. Well, I'm going Fresno State. I once, several years ago, did a dynasty in college football with Fresno State, and they were dominant. Um, and I'm going to go with Fresno State here, like you said, just because you could. You could flip a coin and pick a, a team, and that's probably the team that's going to win. There's no real, nothing on paper that stands out so much, so it's double dogs, there's no state. And the final two games we're going to do, the two biggest games of the week, number 11, USC, is traveling to play number 13, Notre Dame. This will be a fantastic game in my opinion. And I think if USC wins this game, it'll be Sam Darnold's Heisman game. And that's what I'm saying. And I also heard... Um, someone else say that this is a playoff elimination game, and I totally, I, I couldn't agree more with that. That being said, it's at night, and it's at Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend. Notre Dame is winning this game, but it'll be a fantastic game, and it'll be the game of the week. Well, playoff, we can, look, USC, Notre Dame, not even in my conversation about playoff. USC needs to win this game. Notre Dame has been extremely inconsistent over the last six or seven years. Uh, well, no, let's just say they've been, yeah, six or seven years. Game to game, season to season. USC, they've been inconsistent as well, but they've at least beat some good teams and done okay. I'm going to go with USC here. And the final game of the week, game day will be there. The number 19 Michigan Wolverines at the number two Penn State Nittany Lions. Now I don't like either of these teams, obviously, if you know me being an Ohio State fan. As much as I want, I can't believe I'm saying this. Yeah, you know what? I want Penn State to win this game, and I think they will. I just thought about it for a second. And I, I can't believe I would ever say I want Michigan to win the game. And I don't. I want Penn State to destroy Michigan, and I think they I don't know if they'll destroy him because Michigan's defense is really good, but I think they will win by at least 10. By at least 10. I think Penn State's going to pull it off uh, wide out at Beaver Stadium. It's always a tough place to play. Penn State's winning it. Not so fast. They lost in the big house once already, and they're not going to let it happen twice. 
Am I a Harbaugh fan? Absolutely not. Am I a Penn State fan? Nope. And I'll tell you this, Michigan can't lose twice in the big house. That be that would be really bad for their program. They're gonna find a way to win. Yeah, they gotta stop the big two. And that'll end our predictions for this week. Um, yeah, again, we missed last week. Sorry about that. We're going to try to grind till the end, not missing another week of college football. We disagreed on a lot this week. I think yeah. uh, really surprising. I think we only agree on, like, two games. And honestly, in terms of college pick em, this is really good. What? The funny thing is, one of us is, like, is guaranteed to get eight wrong. Yep. Wait, wait, no, never mind. I don't, I don't know why I said that. It's actually, I mean, it's possible, but that would mean someone has to go perfect, and I don't see that happening. Um, right. With that being said, I think this will be a make or break week for both of us, unless we just both split evenly. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we will see you next week. Any last words for the people at home? Oh, yeah. Daddy-o out. All right, see you next week.